You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, the segment of The Breakfast where we take a look at the national dailies and make sense of it. Today, we've invited public affairs analyst, Mr. Ezekiel Iyaitok, to join us. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be here. Morning Fantastic. to you, sir. All right, let's begin with the Punch newspaper. The headline reads, IPOB Masob Asylum. Offer to protect those who need it. UK replies FG. The writer says updates to the Biafran separatist notes expected shortly, says UK High Commission. Offer confirms victimization of IPOB Masob, and that's according to the Southeast Women's Professional in Youth. And above the headline, uh, we see uh, the story here saying Nigeria businesses lose $29 billion annually to poor electricity. That's according to the World Bank. Knocked down tractors. Experts worry as Senate approves fresh $1.5 billion and 995 million euros loan. A professor here saying Pantami was imam when ATBU Muslim community issued fatwa. Fatwa uh, is a death sentence, we believe. Issued fatwa and killed my son in a mosque. Pantami was imam when ATBU Muslim community issued fatwa, killed my son in a mosque. And below the headline here on the Punch newspaper, we see the stories here saying police trail gunmen over ambush and killing of Amoteko operative. Soldiers tackle police as Kaduna varsity students. Abductors demand 800 million naira. Abia Max drug lord's house for demolition. NDLEA arrests Baron with 100 kilograms of cocaine. Ondo monarchs demand more policemen as three construction workers kidnapped. We can't end terrorism without weapons, COAS Chief of Army Staff tells Senate. And lastly here on the Punch newspaper, Chinese loan conditions install 1,525 megawatts and $4 billion Mambila power project. And on the front page of the Punch newspaper, you can see the picture of a road. And the caption here says, this is Shango bus stop or Songo bus stop and Ali Izbu and along the Lagos Abekota Expressway. This is Songo Ota Ogun State on Wednesday. We can see the state of the roads there. Very bad. We can see how much, you know, water has basically, you know, gathered there. State of the road, very bad. All right. We need infrastructure work going on in every part of the country. Moving on to the Daily Independent. Let's see what we can find over here. Arik Bishola, Uyetola Rift deepens. Loyalists clash over Oshun debt profile. Senate OKs Buhari's $2.6 billion external loan request. We're still taking more money. And also the big one there, insecurity. Federal government town hall meeting adopts state police. Once attorney, or autonomy rather, granted local governments recommendations to be presented to NEC today. Also, gunmen killed two, two policemen, burn station in Enugu. Lagos plans own power market to generate supply. And PFN urges Buhari to address call for separation. Senate blasts customs for budgeting two billion naira for retirement incentive. And um, federal government cautions elite promoting disintegration. Once they will suffer breakup consequences more. We can also find here Greenfield University students, abductors demand 800 million naira ransom. On the Guardian newspaper, Senate approves Buhari's fresh loans of 1.5 billion dollars and 995 million uh, euros amid rising debts. We saw the story earlier on the Punch newspaper. Uh, it goes on to say more worries as a papa. This is a uh, below the headline, more worries as a papa gridlock worsens, defies e collop solutions. FEC silent over Pantami's alleged link to Al Qaeda and Taliban. Customs impounds 42 drums of explosives from Benin Republic. Gunmen kill one, abducts 23 at Greenfield University demand 800 million naira ransom. Over 1,600 inmates still at large, six months after Benin jail breaks. And uh, we see an editorial here uh, above the headline on the Punch newspaper, on the Guardian newspaper. It says, federalism is the answer after all. 
And uh, now let's move to the nation, newspapers. Senate okays government's plan to take $1.5 billion and 995 million euro loans. Uh, also, Apple acquires Nigerian app for $1 billion. Man kills mom over property, buries her inside compound. Also on the nation this morning, Akira Dulu rejects Ajayi's offer to return two vehicles. And also killings, abductions in Oyo, Undo, Kaduna, Inugu, and Delta. Abductors of Kaduna Varsity students demand 800 million naira. Amotek cooperative shot dead and three policemen killed in another attack on station. Uh, we can also find on the nation this morning, no cash for police. The new IG, Usman Baba, laments. Nine suspects arrested over alleged uh, over attack rather on Soludo. The CBN says don't reject lower dollar bills. Uh, we think we'll uh, take a pause here and uh, bring in our guest, uh, Mr. Ezekiel Yaitok. Thank you so much once again for joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, um, thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Uh, there's a lot of yeah. these uh, stories. Which where would you like to start from? Pantami. Hmm. You see, we run a country where we really don't understand the fundamentals of governance. And it bothers me. Because I've always said, and a lot of people agree, that after God, the next most important institution is government. I've said this before, and I say it again. I want to look at one, two, three institutions. Number one, I want to look at Ibom Air, okay? Number two, I want to look at um, our super eagles. And number three, I want to look at our government. If we look at these three institutions, nobody is going to bring just anybody to be the pilot or the CEO of Ibom Air because they want it to be profitable. So they do very rigorous profiling to make sure that they, make, they get the best person that understands the policies. Number two, we look at our super eagles. There was a time when we had to remove our son, Sia Sia, in Nigeria and to bring in a foreigner because we needed a competent coach to take us to the World Cup. And yet, when it comes to our country, we really don't think that it's important for us to interrogate leadership profiling, not just at the presidency or at the governor's level. But who are our senators? Who are our House of Reps members? Who are our governors? How do we choose these people? Do we really understand their role? Do we really understand how important it is? Let me come down to um, the, the, the basics. As of today, Chapter 2, Section 14, Subsection 2B of our Constitution states emphatically that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. I'm quoting directly. Chapter 2, Section 14, Subsection 2B. In which case, the two elements are security and welfare. If we understand the essence of government as enunciated expressly in the chapter I just quoted, chapter 2, section 14, subsection 2B of our constitution that says, the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. If we appreciate that, and I gave you the Ibom Air illustration. I don't know where you stop hearing me, Ibom Air, the um, Super Eagles, and Nigeria, where we do not joke with who we profile as the leader or the driver of Ibom Air, you know, and we don't joke with who is going to be the coach of the Nigerian uh, national team. But why do we think that anybody can be our president, anybody can be our national assembly member, anybody can be our governor. I think the time has come when we need to understand the implications. Why do I bring this up? A man like Pantami, it said that a man who was beaten by a snake becomes afraid of earthworm. If you have any trace at all whatsoever, 
to anything that has to do with insecurity, Boko Haram, insurgency, just for the sake of, of, of ensuring that you do not as much as entertain any of this stuff. Mr. Pantami himself ought to do this nation the favor, let me put it that way, of stepping out. Number two, I'm getting really, really, really frustrated as a person with our president. And what frustrates me is that I don't know to what extent he is aware of what is going on in the nation. And I know that I've had a lot of reports about how he's a good man, he loves this country, but I want to say that things make me to um, uh, have a second thought completely. And for a man that has just barely two years to leave office out of eight, I think that his advisors, his family members, his friends, people who wish him well, should really go and have another conversation with him. Okay. And see to what extent he can. He can finish strong. All right, Mr. Eyetok, let's uh, turn to another big story we've seen on the Punch newspaper this morning. Yeah. It reads, IPOB Masob yeah. Asylum offer to protect to those who need it. UK replies the federal government. We, if you recall, the United Kingdom had granted asylum to members of IPOB and Masob, you know, on the basis of uh, political persecution. The federal government had replied to this, you know, basically criticizing the UK for their action. But the UK has replied now saying that, uh, you know, they protect who need protection and that uh, all human rights claims, you know, received from Nigerian nationals are considered on the basis of international merit and in accordance with international obligations. Do you think this move by the UK basically justifies, you know, the stance of, you know, IPOB and, you know, maybe even reinforces, you know, what human rights activists have been saying, that these people indeed are being prosecuted in the country? You see, it still dovetails from where I started from. We have people in government who, under, who don't understand the dynamics of governance and international diplomacy and policies. If they did, as at today, they would be able to read the, 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 the body language of what I should call the international communities. Okay? Now, in a country where IPOM says, we don't want to be a part of Nigeria, you know, that agitation is a global best practice, so to speak. And when there is an agitation, what a country does is to interrogate the agitation and not to victimize the agitators. Mm. And we see IPOP being proscribed as a terrorist organization. It's like, what's going on here? Are they really terrorists? So once you, you know, the word terrorist is an international, you know, it sends you know, waves into the system and they interrogate. And it's difficult for you to really see IPOP as a terrorist organization, mm. particularly in a country where the Fulani headsmen are not branded as such. And I don't like some of the things that IPOP did. You know, I don't like some of the things they did, you know, but I doubt that it comes close to what goes on in the northern part of Nigeria. So with this, the international communities have seen and branded it as victimization. Mm -hmm. And the moment you put a group of people who are agitating as a victimized group, the next thing is for you to rally around to protect them. And that is what has just happened. Okay. So what the federal government needed to do was to show itself as not victimizing the people by way of interface, by way of dialogue. All right, Mr. Ayatok. Wow, um, I think my network is giving me... No, we actually, we actually yeah. got pretty yeah. much what you said, Mr. Ayatok. You we know, can, you're emphasizing you. on the importance okay, great, of... Great, great. Yeah. You know, you've been emphasizing on the importance of, you know, basically interrogating, you know, investigating agitation, trying to find out, you know, where are they coming and how can we solve that? rather than victimize these people. All so right. we, we actually got your point. I, I, I want us to still talk uh, security issues. Uh, you've, I'm sure you must have also been following yes. the Greenfield student abduction 
It's in the news this morning that there is an 800 million naira ransom uh, that has been demanded. Um, you know, it, it almost starts to sound like, you know, we, we, we haven't solved our kidnapping problem in Nigeria. We have a new inspector general of police, um, and uh, there was, of course, some hope that tactics will change, uh, things might be different. But uh, what's your reaction to this? And, you know, remember, there's still, uh, I think, 39 that were kidnapped in uh, Kaduna not long ago who are still in captivity till now. All right, uh, we seem to be struggling with um, Sanyai Talks uh, Network this morning. We we'll hope uh, that we can reconnect with him. Um, in the news, uh, the Greenfield University students who were kidnapped. Um, there's uh, news across the papers this morning saying that there's an 800 million naira being demanded for their release. Um, and it once again takes us back to conversations on um, abductions, on ransoms being paid, on our security setup. Um, how can we put an end to kidnappings? Is this the new business in Nigeria for criminals? Um, and how easy really is it for um, uh, criminals to just walk into a university and take as many students as they can, you know, lay their hands on and disappear. Um, how porous, you know, uh, you know, are the, uh, I mean, it, it's just so much, you know, where do you take these people through? Um, aren't there any, you know, security checkpoints along the roads as much as they are in the Southeast and, you know, heading from, you know, Lagos to the Southeast? Um, how easy is, is it to take dozens of people, you know, into um, um, captivity? Um, what are the parents of these students going to be dealing with, you know, right now? And of so course, sad. the prayers that they will all come back alive and, you know, they would be rescued. I was saying it to you a couple of days ago. How do you expect a person who barely earns, you know, 100,000 naira every month, um, a family that maybe has parents that are retired, has only three kids that are, you know, still trying to find their way through life, mm -hmm. and then there's a 50 million naira ransom on one of them? Where do they get money from? To and pay the kidnappers this are saying that you know they're basically torturing the students, and that well, that's, you know, that's normal three tactic. Of them, and that if they don't, you know, bring the money, they're, they're going to kill that's, them. That's that's normal Just... tactic. I can imagine that there's a lot of people in Nigeria today that are in debt because they had to borrow money to um, pay For ransom, ransom, you know, and, and free their family members. I can imagine that there is a lot of those you know people who had to reach out to uncles or family friends to take one, two, five, ten, you know, million in order to get their family member back, you know, out alive. Mm -hmm. um, does the Nigerian government, you know, have a, a properly set up negotiating team? You know, in, in our police force, do we have a properly set up negotiating team that will be able to have uh, proper negotiations with these kidnappers, find out where they are, find out, you know, if there's, you know, possibility of being I mean, I, I, I wish that was true, but people who have had, you know, issues like this will tell you that even the police will ask you for money for a recharge card, that they don't even have a recharge card on their phones. They would ask you for money to fill their car, that they need money to do these investigations. So you would begin to fund the police, fund the government. I mean, you're an mm. extension of the government. Fund the government to make sure that your, your loved ones are returned home and F safe. Fisaya Shoyompo shared something uh, that he experienced sometime last year, a friend of his who was kidnapped and you know, their journey till they finally got him released. You know, he was kidnapped with a colleague. Uh, the person who they asked to bring the ransom money, when he dropped the money, one person was released and then the person who dropped the money was kidnapped, was taken. Um, and so they had to, you know, spend another two weeks negotiating and finding ways to make another ransom payment for these two new people now that were kidnapped um, and all of that. And in that period, you know, according to his mm. story, he barely got any assistance from the Nigerian security agencies, from the police and from whoever. He barely got anything. Only thing that he, you know, the, that um, came in handy was a private security uh, uh, person or um, consultant who was with them all through that period um, and helped them throughout the negotiating you know, and, and uh, ransom payment and all of that. Um, it's, not, it's not a good place that we are as a country. And we, cannot, we can't cover it up with trains. We can't cover it up with with um, you know some level of infrastructure that has been fixed. No, who is going to ride those trains if nobody is safe? Where are those trains going to take anybody to? I mean, what will the current administration boast of? And what will, what do we really brag you know with? Talking about infrastructure that, we've that you mentioned, sorry, it just leads me to the next story. We've seen this you know on the Nation newspaper. We saw this on the Guardian as well. It says Senate approves. Uh, you know, the Guardian reads Senate approves Buhari's fresh loans of you know 1.5 billion dollars 995 million euros amid rising debts and we know that just 11 months ago you know the president also you know got approval to borrow about 5.5 million dollars as well 
infrastructural deficits that's what they're saying they want to use this money for and uh, this is despite public concerns about nigeria's rising debt profile we saw from a present governor of Edo State, Gordon Owasaki, you know, mentioned this recently and he's generated, you know, attracted lots of criticism, you know, from, from the government, you know, talking about this. And regarding this, you know, debt issue, thank God we have Inyai Talk. Mr. Inyai Talk, welcome. Yeah. Welcome, Mark. It's so taking that the network has turned to We're sorry yeah. about that. What can you hear us now? I can. Can, can you hear us now? Okay, so we're talking about, you know, the rise in debt profile in Nigeria and uh, the Senate approval of Buhari's fresh loans to the tune of, you know, billions of dollars and millions of euros. And that's amid the rise in debt profile of the country. So the, the, the Senate basically saying is that this loans, you know, is for infrastructure development and that they will be funded uh, by the Export Import Bank of Brazil to finance the government, you know, agricultural project, and that also these this uh, you know money will be funded also by uh, a, another bank here that they, that they mentioned. So what what do you have to say about this? What are your comments about this constant borrowing, you know, to fix infrastructural deficits in the face of rising debts in the country? If you can, please squeeze your okay. thoughts into a minute so we can um, um, wrap up uh, the program. Go ahead, yeah, Mr. Ian. I think that there's a feedback. I'm getting a feedback. But let me try to see how can we go on this. Number one is that there's absolutely nothing wrong in getting loans. Absolutely nothing wrong. If I had my way, Nigeria would even borrow a lot more. But we have a very, very sensitive technical challenge. And that challenge is that we have not been able to be professional in the way we do things. When you go borrowing, it's one of the most sensitive undertakings you can do on behalf of a nation or a people. Mm. Because a debt is a debt. It has to be paid back. So people who are patriotic and responsible will scrutinize and look at the exit strategy and think beyond their tenor in office. It's not enough for you to say, oh, let's get things done so that they will say we did this. And at this point, I think I need to caution Nigeria. Because imagine somebody who thinks of tomorrow and plans and lays foundation and is extremely, you know, professional and patriotic. And he leaves office having laid foundation. Will we remember those people? Or will we say, oh, we didn't see the schools they built. We didn't see this that they got. That's why we need to have like a certain consistency. We need to come back and reinterrogate our governance structure because we need to have something that can stay sustainable for 30 years. All these people coming for the next four years or eight years to also show they did this and leave and whatever debt they accumulate, they'll say it will be paid back after our time. It is killing this country. We need to come back and re-evaluate our governance structures and systems and processes. These are the things that bother me. So Can why talk? did Senate approve that loan? Is it because they know this is what is in the larger interest of the country, which is based on governance? Or is it because they also need money to get done what they want to do so that they can look good, notwithstanding whatever the larger implication is? All right. Um, Ezekiel, yeah, th th uh, thank you very much for your time this morning. We apologize for the slight network issues that we had to deal with, but we we'll <laughs> always appreciate your conversations on uh, the program. Thank you for joining us. Yes, thanks I again. I appreciate you. Thank right. you so much. Thank you so You're much. welcome. Stay with us here on The Breakfast. It's Plus TV Africa on a Thursday morning. And uh, we're going to be back after the short break to tell you what happened today, 22nd of April, many, many years ago. Stay with us.